great vinyl community. So <laughs> I don't like doing reshoots of videos, but this one is like my fifth reshoot of this one. Um, the past several takes were far too long. The video would have exceeded 20 minutes and it was like a bunch of in incoherent statements. I'm like wandering all over the place. So I want to try and keep it simple and to the point. And this is a response uh, to my friend Ken McAuliffe. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Ken McAuliffe, I recommend checking him out. I mean, this guy, his jazz knowledge is just immense. Um, I am glad he is making videos because I'm learning so much from watching him. And, you know, he writes for Stereophile. He's interviewed uh, hundreds of jazz musicians and most recently Wayne Shorter. Um, he did a video on the new Music Matters uh, represses. And, you know, it's SRX Vinyl, which I'll talk about here in a minute. And he slammed them for the sound, and he had a bunch of rants against Music Matters. I, I think some of his rants are semi-legitimate, but I don't agree. And um, I, I kind of want to give a little bit of a rebuttal, uh, but I do respect Ken. <laughs> so, Ken, I love you, man. That's all I got to say. But I don't agree completely. I do agree on some things, though. Uh, so, in my previous attempts to do this video, I got on this track about just talking about vinyl quality and the history of, you know, improving vinyl. And, you know, one of the, the albums that I want to jump to is uh, this one uh, by Lou Donaldson. This is Blue as Walk. Now, Ken, uh, in his one of his rants, he said, you know, you're better off just saving up and purchasing, you know, an original press because, you know, those are going to sound the best. Well, you know, what I found with, you know, my sound comparison videos like Dark Side of the Moon or Led Zeppelin 2, uh, everyone's ear is a little bit different and everyone prefers a different sound. And that's not to say I wouldn't take an original of this guy if I could. But, you know, when I look at, you know, the originals and to get a good minty original of this one in particular, you're talking a thousand dollars at least. So, you know, just looking through Discogs, you know, the originals of this guy are pretty pricey. Now, this is a classic records reissue. Now, classic, you know, the, you know they were not uh, the founders of Quiax Vinyl. Now, Quiax Vinyl kicked off in the 80s. And there are some Quiax pressings in the 80s that are transparent, that are just fantastic. Um, but, you know, Classic did it right because they did Stout and Jackets and, you know, they did 180 and 200 gram pressings. And these were all done by Bernie Gr Grunman on a tube based system. Uh, and they sound great. And then after Classic Records folded, you know, Analog Productions came by and, you know, they did their version on 45 RPM. They were competitive in Music Matters, so Music Matters got some titles and uh, Acoustic Sounds or Analog Productions got some titles, and one of the ones that they got was uh, Blues Walk. So this is a 45 RPM edition, so again, 45 RPM, they're trying to get the best sound quality, mastered by Kevin Gray. Uh, but let's talk about the SRX. So. Music Matters, everybody thought that they were done. I thought they were done. Uh, Ken recounts a tale of them trying to do Steely Dan, uh, which is odd. Um, would have been interesting to see them do Steely Dan. Uh, but, you know, out of the blue, one of my uh, watchers commented, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who made the comment, but someone pointed out to me that, hey, they're doing 12 titles at, at the beginning of the new year. And so I jumped on board. I saw this. Uh, Music Matters had not touched this one. And uh, again, what I like about Music Matters is, you know, they're the complete package. And they have spawned numerous imitators now, just trying to imitate the quality. So uh, the Tone Poet series that is coming out uh, by Joe Harley, who is a, one of the founding members of Music Matters, 
and you know, it, it's the same packaging done by Kevin Gray. This is done by Kevin Gray. Now let's talk about the SRX vinyl. So you're buying a new vinyl formula that, you know, if I had to compare it to something, it's probably close to the vinyl formula that was coming out in Japan and it is translucent. So you can see I got a flashlight here. See how I'm going through. Now, TPC or Thai Plastics Corporation had developed this formula. Um, I personally do not think it is unique to Music Matters. I think uh, RTI as a service is, you know, trying to hype this. They call it SRX. It sounds quiet. Um, I don't have an original to compare it to, and I can't afford an original. But to me, in my ears, this sounds good. Is it supposed to be a Rudy Van Gelder? Now that's debatable. Um, so it is going to sound different. You know, everyone's mastering chain is a little bit different. Rudy's mastering chain was different. Um, my understanding, though, was that you know they are trying to get as close to the master tapes as they pass as they they are trying to get as close to the master tapes as they possibly can. And uh, yeah, I. I'm not in the room with those guys, but you know, I like the sound. I dig the sound. Um, and you know, the graphics are just so much better you know, when you compare these. I don't know how well this is going to come out. So, you know, they got the original photo and they just recreated the art, and it's just fantastic. But, you know, going back on the SRX vinyl, um, there's the new Ultra Disc. Uh, by Mobile Fidelity, which also uses RTI. Prices on these guys uh, went up, um, but they're selling. They're selling out. Uh, people are paying uh, $125 for these guys. And uh, it, it, again, it's is it, this is like this is probably exactly the same vinyl formula. See. See, it's translucent. $125 for a record. Yeah, it's pretty pricey. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to stick with this. Um, I'm probably not going to get all of these just due to the price. Um, it has to be an album I really, really like. And even still, I'm questioning, do I really want to spend that kind of money? I mean, $125? You could buy a lot of different records. Um, the packaging is, is exquisite. Um, but same thing with the, uh, music matters, um, $60, you compare it to original or even a, uh, a repress, a ladder repress that's near mint and you're paying the same price. So for me, I like music matters. I don't agree with everything that they're doing business wise. I, I wish they wouldn't have cut off their distribution, but they, they got to make a profit too. And. I think uh, Ron Rombach, uh, the other owner, was getting frustrated by, you know, other secondary distributors, like, just jacking up the prices, and, you know, he's losing out. So I can't blame him for what he did. Um, do I like it? No. Uh, I think he would sell more records if he'd just, you know, keep that, that baseline price. But, you know, it is what it is. I am very happy that, you know, they came out with new releases. I wish they would have done some of the, the rarer titles. So, like, there's some stuff by Thad Jones that, you know, I'd like to see released. There's just, there's a lot of Blue Notes that I think they could have delved into, but they didn't. Uh, maybe in the future years, maybe they'll do more. I was surprised. I, I thought they were they were dead. But, uh, anyways, anyone from Music Matters, Ron, if you're, you happen to catch this, um, Thank you, uh, Ken. I respectfully disagree with some of your points, uh, but you know I still love you, dude. <laughs> so uh, thank you for watching VC, and I'll catch you next time.